What's up you guys, hey it's Dr. Buck and this is another one of my suture tutorial videos. In this video we're going to go over the different types of suturing. So we're going to go over a running suture, an interrupted, a vertical mattress, and a horizontal mattress. All right, I'm going to show you how to do those. Let's get to it. All right, first I'm going to get my handy dandy little kit here. This is from Medical Creations. You guys are sponsoring this video, I really appreciate that. So if you are looking for a suture kit, you get this, you get the pad, you get the uh, sutures, you get also some uh, scalpels as well. And you can get 10% off if you uh, look in the comments, use my code and go to their website and get a kit. So anyway, I'm gonna get my uh, needle driver and my AdSense forcep. And I'm gonna probably need this uh, scissor as well at some point. All right, I'm gonna grab this suture here. It's a 3-0 nylon. And uh, a lot of times you'll see nylon is black in the hospital. These are a different color. It just depends on the manufacturer and stuff like that. But this is nylon. This is a monofilament. And we'll go over the different types of sutures in a different video. This is the fun stuff. I wanted to do these videos first. And then we'll learn about the uh, sutures in another video. So first I'm gonna go over the running stitch. This is a running stitch because because you do not stop and tie uh, every time. And uh, this is also called a whip stitch. If sometimes you hear people call it a whip stitch when they, you know, somebody is in the ER and they have a big gash in their head and they're bleeding profusely and the surgeon says, just whip stitch it, gee whiz, come on, let's go. This is the whip stitch, okay? First we'll go over putting the needle on the needle driver. I've done that a couple times in my other videos, but it's a new video, so we'll do it real quick. So you wanna have it, the needle as close to the tip of the needle driver as possible. You want about two thirds of the way back on the needle and at a 90 degree angle, or just, I like to do a little bit of angle like that. I put my finger as close to the tip of the needle driver as possible. That makes it more steady. I also have my hand, if it's appropriate, I have my hand or my pinky uh, or my palm resting on some kind of surface. If you can rest your elbow as well, that makes everything more steady. So I'm gonna put a stitch in here. We're gonna go 90 degrees, turn our uh, wrist. We're gonna go over to the next one, bang it across at the same level, same depth, okay, all the way out. I'm gonna grab it here. Notice I'm palming this. I'm gonna grab it where I want the next stitch to go, okay? I mean, or I wanna grab the needle driver for the next one. So I'll snap it like that, lock it, ratchet it locked, pull it up, flip it around. This is why I like to palm it. And there I go, I'm ready for the next one. I'm gonna tie this first one, and then we're gonna run it, okay? So hopefully you can see this suture is pretty light. So if, for this knot here, I'm gonna do a one-handed knot. This is a right-handed, one-handed knot. You can see my other video for uh, knot tying. So I'm gonna do one of those. I'm gonna do the second one so I can pull it down really easy. Nice and tight, not too tight. Don't strangulate the tissue, just approximate the tissue. It's very important, you'll hear a surgeon say that a lot. Don't strangulate it, dang! Right? Strangulation means you're cutting the blood supply off to the tissue and then it'll die. And if you put a stitch in, in dead tissue, it just stitches, comes out and the wound opens. So that's why surgeons get all hot and bothered, shall we say, about that. Here's another tip. You can have your assistant hold the suture away from you if you, if you can. If you have an assistant, that's fine. If you don't, that's okay too. So the running stitch is pretty simple. You're gonna throw multiple sutures in this tissue over and over. So now I wanna say, this is one of the things that'll speed up your suturing a lot, and is if you can grab the needle right where you want it for the next one, you ratchet it closed, tighten it up, you pull this, right? And remember, I'm pulling it way high, don't pull it towards your face, cause you'll like hit your face and then you know, contaminate everything. So this is a good move where you, you put this forcep in here, you get the length of this suture like this, and so you control the length of it. You can also kind of wind it up in your hand like this. It does get caught sometimes in other things, so if it's appropriate, I, I just do this, all right? And so then I can pull it, and I can also pull it up like this, hold it, right? And I can see where the next one, I wanna put the next one like that. So if you need to do that. So I'm just gonna go across here like this, something like that. Now I don't grab the needle with this forcep because it really doesn't, it's not made for that. You know, like you'll grab it and it'll come out and all that stuff. It's not made to grab this needle, it's made to grab tissue. So if you're gonna grab something, grab the tissue on this side and hold this and steady it. And it, when you steady the tissue and the needles in the tissue, then the needle then is steady too. You grab it right where you want it 
Make sure that this big loop out here is not getting caught on something, because if it gets caught out here, you pull really hard, you can pull this tissue out. You can um, you know, damage that tissue. More damage to the tissue is bad, because you'll kill more of it, and then, first of all, you'll make more scar, and second, you know, you can have, a, have it fall apart. And that's called a dehiscence of the, um, of the wound. So I'm gonna grab that. Okay, super easy. I'm gonna do a couple of these real fast here. Right, we're just gonna go, boom. Like I'm palming this, this thing, and you wanna make sure that you go under the knot so you know where this, all this stuff is so you don't do a locking uh, stitch. And matter of fact, now that I said that, let's do a locking one real quick. Uh, you don't need a locking stitch all the time, but it is good for hemostasis. If you have somebody who's bleeding from the scalp really bad, it's a good idea to do a locking stitch sometimes. So this one, this loop is out here. I'm gonna pull this out inside the loop, and then you're gonna see this pull down on it. So you see how this loop here gets pulled by this next one? That is a locking, that's where you're locking it. So the first one is a running non-locking, this is the running locking. And I can manage my suture as well, now it's getting a little shorter, and I can just hand, you know, wind it up here, and uh, manage it a little bit better so it doesn't, you know, fall in an unsterile portion of the field or something. Oh, so I was gonna do a running, um, non-locking. So I want this in the loop, right? Like that. And I didn't do it the easy way, the fast way. So this is, now see that tissue has come together pretty tight. That's why it's good for hemostasis. And there's uh, little blood vessels in the dermis of the uh, skin. And they can bleed pretty good. This is why a good Locking stitch is good for the scalp, especially the scalp is bleeds, can bleed really heavily. Sitting in the trauma bay trying to figure out why the patient's uh, hypotensive and tachycardic and stuff, and he, they just only have a, only a scalp wound. Uh, meanwhile, there's like two liters of blood on the scene, you know, from the scalp. So this is something that you can do pretty quickly. So I will uh, tie this here. Now I'm gonna talk, talk about tying this, so I'm gonna go this way. I'm gonna treat this loop just like a single suture, okay? And I tie this with a needle on a lot. As long as the needle is not on something that's like stiff, if this falls on someone, then you're gonna, you're gonna, poke, you're gonna poke them or you're gonna poke yourself. The needle by itself like this, very unlikely to poke something, especially if you're careful and you do it a lot. So I'm gonna do one hander, right? See how that needle just comes through there really easy, right? As long as you're not grabbing the tip of the needle, that's, you don't wanna do that, it comes through. And just tie that, okay, right. And then there's your tie. And it just acts like, that, that loop there just acts like a normal suture coat. So that's a running, locking, and non-locking, okay? So this is gonna be an interrupted stitch. It's called interrupted because we're doing them by themselves and we tie each one. Okay, interrupted, I'm gonna do the same thing. Bring these two, the tissue together here. And we're assuming this is skin. This is kind of what this is simulating. We'll pull this out. And I'm just gonna tie this. So this is uh, one interrupted, right, suture. Interrupted stitch. You get that together, and then you're gonna t cut that. Interrupted is kind of simple, and it's one of the most simple ones, so I'm sure you kind of get the hang of it. But what surgeons do oftentimes is, when we're gonna close the bowels, we might do something like this. And uh, if, typically it's, we do lots of, sutures at the same time and there's they're multiple and you don't cut them you just have the uh, scrub tech hand you another stitch each time but so in a sense I'll just cut these and we'll pretend we have five of these in a row and we're gonna close the bowels your surgeon may have you like this and they want you to hand them each one so if I'm over here and I'm gonna go from here to here then you pick up the Stitch, you hand it to the surgeon, that he ties it, he or she ties it, okay? Come down, approximating the tissue, not too tight, okay? Then you hand him the next one. Simple interrupted. And the spacing is just dependent upon the tissue. Uh, you can see there's little spaces in here, because this is not normal skin, but usually something like that for skin is probably fine. And typically I don't like to put the polyfilament or the silk in the skin because it causes more of a reaction. I'm just uh, demonstrating. That. So, so then you're gonna end up with these sutures like this. This is simple sutures, okay? These are gonna be the mattress sutures. 
And these sutures are good for approximating tissue that has a little bit of tension on it and uh, you can't quite pull it together or the suture is pulling out like when you tie it down, it pulls right out of the tissue. So you might need a mattress suture. And these are, there's a vertical mattress and horizontal mattress and um, they're each used in different areas. And the, the I'm gonna do the uh, horizontal one first and then the vertical second. And the horizontal one is, is kind of like when you have too much uh, tension on the wound and you need that extra uh, strength. And so you're kind of, what you're doing with this, um, horizontal mattress is distributing the force um, not just down to one spot, it's two spots and so you distribute the force and so it doesn't pull through quite as easily. So we're gonna do the same thing, right? This is the same, you come across there, but then this is different. Now, this is uh, a good move I've been wanting to show you guys for a while. So what you do is you pull this needle up, right? But what you do is you're going to flip this backwards and so that is the move right there okay let me do it again one so the first one is a forehand the second one is a backhand but what you're going to do is you're going to uh, touch the tip you're not going to lock the thing okay it's going to be open but you're going to have it in your jaws okay and then when it's open but not locked you touch the needle you swing it around and then that's the backhand okay and this is kind of fun to do and this is a fun thing to practice too. So I'm gonna pull this all the way through here just so it's not away or tie it after. And then the backhand, right, it's the same thing. And this, again, this is why I like palming this because a backhand like this is very difficult. You put you put it in like that and look at like kind of where I am. Hi, oh, I'm over here. I have to turn this much to get that backhand to go. And that's another point I wanna make is that it is okay to move your body and you should move your body to change positions so that way your arm and your ergonomics are better for the suture, right? Um, I'm kind of keep trying to keep this straight up here uh, because it's easier to see for you guys. But but so this backhand, if I palm it like this, it's it's not quite as hard to, to pull this around, right? So my wrist comes on like this. Normally I might like turn, turn this way or something like that, but uh, because of the video, it's a little different. So. And that is the uh, horiz uh, horizontal mattress. And then, so this is going to pull these two. Out. See, see how it gets pulled? You're not watching. So um, this is going to pull this tissue together and spread this force over this area, a larger area. So if you have a larger area, then you have less pressure and then uh, not quite as much tension. And so you will be able to put the stitch in without um, actually pulling through the tissue. So this uh, knot, you do have to be careful because if you tie it super tight, it can uh, kill the, bl the blood vessels, or well, it can tighten, constrict the blood vessels so much in this area that it kills this skin here. So you do have to be careful. So that is the horizontal mattress. And now we'll go to the vertical mattress. And a vertical mattress is, you're gonna do two sutures on each side, but it's going to be one here, one there, a far one, a far one, a near one, a near one, okay? And this one is kind of a box almost, right? So this one, I'm gonna come out a little further than the, all the other sutures I've done so far. And this is a little harder to get all the way in one bite, so I'm gonna go two bites. Okay, I'm gonna pull this out right there, right where I want it. I'm gonna boom, I'm gonna flip it around. Bang, I'm right there. Bada bing, or whatever the noises you wanna make. You gotta make something though, because surgery is fun. I'm gonna pull this through just to make things easy. So I'm gonna show you this move again. Typically, I would pick it up, right? I'm gonna pick this thing up like this. I'm gonna flip it around like that, and then I'm backhanding. And then I'm going to go, this is the vertical, so we're gonna, we wanna approximate these edges as best possible, right? And this is a good one for skin. If you can't, if you're having a tough time getting the edges together, and you wanna make sure they come together, this is good for that. Both of these do put, can put a lot of tension, so you do have to be careful of that, and you wanna pull down with your, finger and not your thumb like I was doing. Okay, whole bunch because it's nylon. Six, seven, I'm doing extra just to show you guys. 
Okay, and that is the vertical mattress. All right, you guys, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching so much. Thanks to Medical Creations for sponsoring the video and sending me this awesome kit. If you want one of these kits, uh, you can go to their website and use my code, check below for the code, and get yourself one. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and share, and I'll see you in the next video.